For quite a number of years now, budget level 50mm f1.8 lenses have been one of the kind of lenses that pretty much everybody owns at some point. The Nikon 50mm f1.8 G, good budget level lens, the Canon 50mm f1.8 or the Nifty 50 or Fantastic Plastic as it's sometimes known, even I owned one of them when I first started out. But now there's a new contender on the market, the Yongluo 50mm f1.8 Mark II. So, is this thing more nifty or more fantastic than the Canon? Firstly, what does this lens consist of? Well, looking at it, it looks pretty similar to the Canon 50mm f1.8, but then that's no surprise because this is the Mark II version of the Yongnuo lens. They have already done a Mark I version, which was pretty much an exact clone of the Canon, so much the same here. So, what's different about this one? Well, looking at the box, we have a stated close focus distance of 35 centimeters or 1.1 feet, which puts it in the same realms as the new Canon 50mm STM. The older Mark II version and the Yongnuo clone were both minimum focus distance of 1.5 feet. So this thing can focus a little bit closer than the older version. It also states quick autofocus and autofocus and manual focus and it has a 58 millimeter front filter. So straight off the bat, 58 millimeter front filter thread. Well, the old Canon 50 millimeter 1.8 and the Yongnuo had 52 millimeter front filters and the new Canon STM has a 49 millimeter front filter thread. So the new Canon STM has gone down in size, whereas this thing has gone up. In terms of build quality, there isn't any. It's definitely plastic. Absolutely no weather sealing. We have one small switch on the side, which is the autofocus manual focus. There's no full-time manual override. So if you want to manually focus the lens, you have to click it over into manual focus. However, once you are in manual focus, the focus ring is very, very easy to turn. I mean, I can literally spin it with my little finger. There's about 90 degrees of rotation from minimum focus all the way out to infinity. As you can see, when you do focus closer, the whole lens shifts forward, which is pretty much the same as the Canon offerings as well. While the filter thread does extend outwards when you focus, it doesn't rotate, so circular polarizers are not a problem with this lens. Video shooters might find the focus throw a little bit too free and easy to get accurate focus pull straight away. Might take a little bit of getting used to. There are focus distance scales on the focus ring, which is a nice feature to have. And the rest of the focus ring that isn't the distance scale has this nice little grooved pattern just to give you that extra little bit of grip when you are manually focusing the lens. Even though the lens is bigger than Canon's current offerings, it's not exactly huge. It's still a nice small lens and it is very lightweight. So taking this around when you're traveling or whatever, you're not gonna notice it at all. It's a very nice lightweight lens. Yongnuo states it has fast autofocus. It really doesn't. It's kind of got what you would expect from any normal budget level lens. It's probably not much quicker than the old nifty 50s anyway. In terms of autofocus noise, kind of sounds like R2-D2. So it's not the blisteringly fast autofocus that Yongnuo claim, but then to be fair, it's a budget level 50 mil prime. None of them are particularly fast. And in terms of autofocus noise, I mean, the Canon STM is damn near silent, so it's not as quiet as that. But I do think it's quieter than the old Canon Nifty 50 1.8 Mark II. So, so it's not a massive distraction, but if you are prone to taking photographs in very quiet environments like church ceremonies and stuff like that, this might be a little bit too noisy for you. But now the important question, what's it like optically? Well, I'll give you a clue. It's a 50 pound lens. So if you're expecting this to rival the Zeiss, Otis or the Sigma art lenses, you're in the wrong video and you should probably seek psychiatric help. But to be honest, it's not actually as bad as I was expecting. I mean, you know, obviously it's a budget level lens. It's never gonna be mind blowing compared to the higher end lenses. You get what you pay for, but I'll be quite honest, optically, it's better than I was expecting. Let me bring up a couple of pictures here to show you, talk you through them. So this obviously shows you the level of sharpness you can get from the lens, but also kind of what the outer focus background looks like as well. So at f1.8, a couple of things I'll point out. Firstly, 
I dropped the ball and slightly misfocused the lens. So I was actually hoping to focus on the face of the bird here. And as it happens, I've kind of focused more on its chest. But where the chest does land in focus kind of underneath the bird, you can see there's actually kind of really good sharpness there, even for an f1.8 lens. There does appear to be a little bit of green tinging. If you look across the top of the bird's head, there's a, a bit of a green hue to it. And also the cobwebs are slightly out of focus. You can see there's a little bit of off color with them, but nothing too major. The bokeh balls in the top right corner, well, they're more rugby balls than footballs. Take it down to f2.8. Those balls kind of round themselves out a little bit. The seven blade aperture on this lens does kind of straighten those out. The sharpness, now that I've actually got the lens focused properly, is, to be fair, 2.8. That is a really, really sharp lens. In terms of vignetting, you know, at f1.8, there is some vignetting there. It's not the end of the world, and to be honest, most people kind of like the vignetting anyway. By f4, vignetting is all but gone. Now, a couple of pointers really here. One, that level of vignette is pretty much on par with what you will get from Canon. Two, Adobe don't support Yongnuo lenses in their correction profile. So if you want to correct for vignetting and distortion, there are no Yongnuo lenses in Adobe Lightroom for you to choose. But you can kind of get away with using the correction profiles for the Canon. You just have to go in manually and select them every single time. It won't be completely perfect, but it kind of will be there or thereabouts. It will certainly, if you're trying to remove vignetting, it's going to do a better job than just not having any vignette removal at all. Now, let's look at corner sharpness. All I actually did with this was just recompose the image, so I basically put the ornament in the top right corner of the frame. So at f1.8, here you can see there is obviously that shading from the vignetting, but that's expected. But to be honest, the corner sharpness is actually holding up, again, better than I expected. There is definitely a drop in sharpness from the center to the corner, but it's not a huge amount. I was almost expecting that thing to be kind of completely unusable in the corners, but it's not ideal, you know, but then if you want sharpness all the way across the frame, you're not really gonna be shooting at f1.8 anyway. f2.8, corners become a lot brighter, lens becomes a lot sharper as well. F4, not much of a jump in corner sharpness, to be honest. It's more just the depth of fields getting deeper, so more of the scene is becoming in focus. So realistically, with this lens, you can shoot it at f1.8 quite happily. If you want that extra sharpness, if you want the vignetting on, you stop it down to f2.8, you've got an absolute belter of a lens right there. And for close focus distance, here we have a test shot at minimum focus distance. You can see center of the frame, even close focus, still holds up pretty well. Now, one of the things I did see Yongnuo mention in the write-up is about the optical coatings that they've used to reduce flare on this lens. Well, spoiler alert, it's still got flare. Point it straight at a bright light, you get a big onion ring glare ball right in the middle of the frame. But then, to be fair, you're not going to be taking many photographs pointing straight at a big light source. As you angle it away, there is definitely noticeable flaring across the frame. But thankfully, it's not a wide angle lens, so it doesn't take much of a turn away from the light for the flare to finally disappear. And the lens doesn't ship with a lens hood as such, but then kind of looking at the design of it, it's almost got its own lens hood in. The optics are recessed so far into the lens barrel that this bit basically acts like a lens hood anyway. Optically, it's probably not far off the Canon to be fair. The only advantages to the Canon STM over this are the STM is a smaller lens, but it's also a heavier lens, so there is a better build quality to the STM than this. And obviously, the key selling point of the Canon STM is the stepper motor, which gives you absolutely silent autofocus, whereas obviously this doesn't. But this is still not as noisy as the older Canon 50mm 1.8. Now, you can pick up the 50mm 1.8 Mark II secondhand for not very much, basically. Probably about the same sort of price as this. This is about £55. The Canon STM is currently about 110 so it's pretty much double the price of this. Now, don't get me wrong, £110 for a lens is still dirt cheap. In the great scheme of things, compared to what you can pay for lenses, £110 is basically nothing. 
you will find very few lenses for a cheaper price than that brand new. But if you are somebody who is on a very tight budget or you just want to dabble around with prime lenses and don't want to risk spending that extra money on an STM because you're not convinced you're going to like it, this isn't actually a bad alternative. Like I said, if you are prone to photographing in places that are very quiet, the autofocus might be a bit more audible than you would like and the STM might be a better choice. Also, if you're wanting to shoot video and your camera has the ability to autofocus during video, the STM motor is going to be a lot better suited for that because you're not going to pick up the noise of it in the video audio, you will with this, and also the autofocus is a lot smoother. But as I've always said, you get what you pay for. And £55 for a lens, if you don't need the advantages that the Canon STM offers you or you can't justify the price of the STM, this is definitely worth a consideration. But what do you guys think? Do you like the look of the Yongnuo or would you prefer to stick to the native Canon or Nikon offerings? Have you ever owned a Nifty 50 lens? What did you make of it or do you still have it? Leave your comments in the box down below. Thank you so much for stopping by and hopefully I will see you in the next video.